Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of That Settles the Issue. And this is Pastor R. Dallas Green. I am Dr. Amir Rashidian. And what we always start with is, Pastor R., what's the issue? The issue today is healing prayer. Oh, goodness. Yes. Well, I do, I do believe prayer heals. However, and this is a soft however, is that we need to also act. We mm -hmm. need to brush our teeth regularly. We can't just pray for the teeth. Mm -hmm. And we need to, you know, um, whatever, you know, hygiene. And, and, and when, they're, when we're ill, then there's, there's, I believe, treatment is necessary, yeah. right? Um, so, so are you saying that, that only prayer is, is what we need to heal? Um, well, I believe that God can do things we can't do. For sure. But there's things we need to do also in response to what God tells us to do. Yes. So I think it's both and. I think we, we have a part and I think God has a part. There's a great story about a woman who uh, had a pressing need. It says that a large crowd followed after Jesus and pressed around him. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is really at the height of his popularity now. Right. right. Getting great, a good reputation. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. I wonder what that was like, Dr. Amir, bleeding for 12 years. My goodness. I mean, I assume she is weak. She is tired. She is grumpy. She <laughs> is angry, probably. She probably has lost hope. Um, I would assume there's uh, some level of um, not just mental anguish, but physical pain as well. Yeah. Well, there's sort of the normal bleeding, the monthly cycle. Right. And then there's abnormal bleeding. This right. appears to be on the abnormal side. Yeah. Extraordinary. So there's anemia there. I mean, she can't possibly be generating as much blood cells to maintain, keep up with that. So yeah. fatigue is a big thing. So here's what she did. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors. Hmm. <laughs> What's interesting to me about this text is that... I don't remember that part. <laughs> Mark, who wasn't a physician, mentioned yes. she suffered under the care of many doctors. But Luke, who was a physician, didn't mention that. Interesting. Yeah. So she, wow. she had spent all she had. So apparently she's gone from doctor to doctor right. trying to find a remedy to her problem. And none of the doctors is able to help her. But she's making herself poorer and poorer. Yeah. It, they would maybe put in the category of an incurable disease. Right. This is something we can't help you with. Right. So after they took her money, then she's left without their help. Right. Wow. Well, instead of getting better, it says she got worse. And when she heard about Jesus, now, why is it, Dr. Amir, that he's sometimes the last person we turn to? Gosh, you're right about that. Yeah. But she heard about Jesus. Yes. Jesus is gaining reputation. People are following after him. People are being healed by him. Right. And now she begins to wonder, I wonder if Jesus can help me. Right. Well, she's probably heard some of the stories of the others who have been healed, and which is amazing because there was no Facebook at the time and no, no social media of any kind. So <laughs> the email blast didn't go out about Jesus. So it's word of mouth. Can you imagine how many people had to tell how many other people mm -hmm. for it to travel miles and miles out mm -hmm. from each story? It's incredible. Yes. yes. But she did hear about Jesus. So she had a plan. And her plan was she was going to come up behind him in the crowd and touch the hem of his garment, mm. his cloak. Because she believed, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. I wonder how much healing power our God has. It's phenomenal. It's uh, uh, limitless. Yes. The things which are um, incurable to man are not incurable to God. Yes. I wonder if any of our listeners are struggling with the uh, situation now. Wow. Yeah, and we just prayed for a dear brother who's uh, been diagnosed with a brain issue, and, and uh, he, he'll be having surgery soon. And um, yeah, yeah, there's, it's, it's out there. I guarantee everybody, on le even if you know, they're, they've never experienced something like this, they know at least one person. You know, with, with cancer touching one out of every four people nowadays, mm -hmm. We all know at least one person who has suffered through it or is suffering through it. And, and I can only imagine the thoughts that go through your mind and the fears, the doubts, the worries, the anger. Yeah. But Debbie's reading something yesterday about the projection is 80% of women will have breast cancer. Wow. 
And I know that in the in prostate cancer, when you're in your 60s, you have a 67 percent chance yes. of prostate. You're 70, 70 percent. So the longer you live, the more likely you're going to get That's prostate right. cancer. That's right. Yeah, if you live long enough, something's going to bother you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so she has this plan, and immediately when she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, her bleeding stopped, mm -hmm. and she felt in her body that she was free from her suffering. You know, Jesus did his healings instantaneously and miraculously. No one could deny the fact that this woman was suffering and now touching Jesus, she wasn't suffering. Mm -hmm. Many of our cures seem to be more progressive or incremental, but in this case, it was instantaneous. Now, God not only healed her, but he has the power to heal us. Yes. So our faith is in a God who is able, who's all powerful. Absolutely. He's always aware. He's, he's able, aware, and willing, and, and um, yeah, you're right. That, so, so, so how much of our um, efforts do we put into prayer versus how much of our efforts do we put into taking care of ourselves? Mm -hmm. For example, eating right to prevent that yes. imminent, inevitable cancer that we're seeing, uh, you know, that the, the numbers keep growing. I mean, do we just say, well, I'm going to get it anyways, um, and when it happens, then I'll, 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 pray and then put my body in the hands of the doctors until then I'm just going to do whatever I feel like doing and and enjoy my life which I am certainly against uh, what do you think well you know Jesus when he was talking in the Sermon on the Mount he says and when you pray mm. go into that inner room and close the door behind you and pray to your father in secret and he hears your prayer in secret he'll answer you according to his will it doesn't say Dr. Mir if you pray yes it says when you pray when you pray when you pray. So the expectation is of a child of God that we're going to turn to our Father for His help. Yes. You know, I was thinking about this the other day about how if one of my children were to come to the door and ring the doorbell. I would come to them and say, what are you ringing the doorbell for? You're one of us. You're my child. Well, come, this is your house. I like come, that. Come inside the house because this is our house. Yeah. Our Father doesn't want us ringing the doorbell. He wants us to come to Him, come into the house, into His throne room, and ask Him. We're His. We're His children. He wants to show His goodness to us. What a beautiful image. <laughs> wow. You don't need to ring the doorbell. And Jesus felt, you know, when she touched Him, the power of God is body. And He said, well, who touched me? And he's asking His disciples, who right. touched me? It's, this, it's a big crowd, Jesus. Right. Like, come on now. And the woman comes and she tells him the whole story. This is what Jesus says to her. Daughter, your faith has healed you. Now go in peace and be freed from your suffering. So faith seems to have a big part yes. in opening up yes. the treasures of heaven and God releasing his power in our life to believe that our God wants to help us. Yeah, She believed that Jesus would help her. Well, there you go. That's the other part. That's your part. Is you have to bring faith into your prayer. So what is faith, Dr. Mir? What is when we have faith? Faith is, is, is when you know without having seen that there is power and that, um, that you believe. Yeah. You, be you believe it's going to be there. Faith is kind of like... Uh, um, this this is faith. We have faith that there are few people listening to us <laughs> when we sit here and talk. Because yes. we don't see them, we don't see you, we don't know you're there. Hopefully, you're there. But we're we're doing this in hopes that we're helping someone. That's kind of like faith. Faith is when I see this chair and I go, I'm gonna have faith that it's gonna hold me, so I will sit in it. It's yes. not that I'll not sit in it and say I have faith. Faith is when I actually go ahead and step into it, yeah. trusting that it'll hold me. Is when you go to God, yeah. faith is trusting that He'll see you through. So what I do know is that God has promised me to hear my prayers. Yes. What I don't know is how He will answer my prayers. Correct. So I have to open my hand and ask God to fill my hand with something. That's faith to believe. I'm opening my hand to God and believing He has a gift He wants to give me. Yeah, and Daniel said, even if he doesn't answer our prayer, right? They were about to step into the, was it the fire or the lion's den? It was a fire. fire. 
they're, they're being put in the fire and and they they said we'll never worship your god we're going to worship our god so go ahead and throw us in the fire we know our god will deliver us but even if he doesn't we'll still believe in him because i think that's the other part of part of faith is that if god withholds the thing i asked for it's still for the greater good yes. but i won't know it until i'm up there in heaven now we're talking mystery, right? The yes. tension of like, I don't understand it completely. Exactly. When we pray, we pray to a Father who is good, and we don't know exactly know the outcomes, but we know it ultimately will be good and to His glory. Exactly. Exactly. I guess that's so. Is there it. well? Is there any sickness in 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 heaven? No. No. When, and, and this is another piece note from here. When Jesus was here, He brought the kingdom, mm -hmm. and all sickness disappeared because He healed people. Mm -hmm. But now we live in sort of the kingdom that's here, but not fully yet. So we have healing, we have sickness, we have war, we have peace. So it's it's sort of like we see healing happen, which shows us the power of the kingdom, but we also see sickness, the power of sin. In right. Our world. But we do both agree that if you're saved, you're going to heaven. Yes, you're that's... going to heaven. Whatever you have is healed completely that much we agree on we do agree on that, that and that settles the issue